Hi, Jess, Jess J. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, I like that. I love it. How are things? What time is it there? Okay, so it's 1 p.m. here in the afternoon. Oh, nice. So you've got the whole day to go. <laughs> I have the whole day to go, and yours is coming to an end slowly, huh? So hot. Honestly, I don't know it's like there, but it's boiling here. It's like, I just said, I feel like I'm on the sun at the moment. <laughs> is, ah, well, you know what? It's, um, it's hot here, but I live in Georgia, and so it's... Always hot here, Always even hot. when even when it's cold, it's hot. You know, it's still hot. so <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah, so it's so it's much. um it's beautiful though. Then yeah, well that's it. To be fair, it's nice. I like. I don't want to be like a typical Brit, but because the moment it's raining and then it's sun and you're like, oh, it's too hot. It's not. It's just a weird. It's like a stuffy heat, which I'm just like not feeling. But yeah. yeah. But thank yeah. you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate Aww. it. Thank you. thank you. I see one of my friends in here. Hey, C.E. Mosby. That's my, she was my baby a long time ago, Carolyn. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Well, I see some people have been asking questions, and there's some questions, because it was rescheduled from last week. Um, yes. So some questions that people put in. But um, so how have you been during the whole um, lockdown? How has it been for you? Has it been pretty easy? Has it been nice to have a break? What's happened? Yeah. Well, first, let me just apologize for having to cancel last week. And thank you so much for being so kind and patient with me. You know the real deal. You know the story, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep that. We're going to keep that between you and me, all right? All but, uh, but um, you know, the lockdown, it's crazy. I, you know, I have had all these different dates, you know, planned. And so that, of course you know, stopped everything, pushed it into to um, to this year. So I'm going to be going, uh, coming over to Wolverhampton, Wol oh. Wolverhampton. Uh, is that right? Wool or yeah. Wall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, in September, end of September for Party in the Park. Um, what date is that? That's the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Now, I'm coming in on the 20th. Okay. You coming? All right, you're on the list. Come on, baby. Let me see you there. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm coming on on the 25th. And yeah, then... Like, um, actually, my birthday. That literally is... Oh, birthday. really? Yeah. Oh, you've got to come. You've I got know. to come. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's the 25th. I'll be on at a, at 1.15 p.m. And, you know, they asked me, they're like, Kim, do you mind being on so early? I said, no, I just feel sorry for the person that has to follow me. <laughs> yeah. I'm a slight. I'm a slight. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Hey, that. David Britton. That's David Britton from Chicago. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. I'll give a little, little wave. I'll give a little wave to people. No, that's amazing. When was the last time you were in Britain? Um, it would be two years ago. Oh, two years ago, yeah, it, well, it could have been two or three years ago, but it, you know, um, it was during this time actually, and I was yeah. I was there for uh, Pride, and um, yeah. also I record did some recording, and I stayed with my my good friend Scott Featherstone, and um, he actually he Desford and Steve Teasdale, they're my my to go go-to people they yeah. run um yeah scott and steve have sold out uh entertainment if you will and so steve steve manages my my stuff over there well, and yeah and scott um and des are the music behind the voice and it's yeah they're they're awesome brilliant it's amazing as well you're doing the pride obviously pride month was uh last month for us but this weekend yes. you've probably seen on my, my instagram i'm launching my own LGBTQ plus club this Saturday. It's the Lord. Are you? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's oh, con congratulations, babe. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a struggle. I mean, I'd say 70%, yeah. 60% of people are lovely, but as always, like anything, any minority groups or anything different from the norm. Yeah. Um, the, you'll always get the haters, but yes. it's been obviously with COVID, it was really worrying because they kept uh, delaying the, the lockdown. And yes. Like, Please just don't, if, they, if it had done one more week, 
I would have had to have shut the club. And obviously, I've, oh, I've wow. drag artists come in, podium dancers, and yes. <laughs> lip sync battles a lot. It's gonna be oh, fun. wow. It's going to be massive. Congratulations. I wish Thank you all you. the success in the world. So much, I appreciate that. So, going back, so what I'm always interested in talking to people is how did, even before like Kim Sims, the music, where, how did you, because I read obviously, you did, you were a jingle singer, is that right? Yes, and yeah. You liked McDonald's and chewing gum and... <laughs> <laughs> I did <That's> some research. <laughs> <laughs> you, better, you better work, work. So, I, um, yeah, 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 I did, I did commercials, I did jingles, I was the voice, but I, you know, I wasn't, um, uh, on camera, I was behind, yeah. you know, the scene singing. So, yeah. um, a, a gentleman by the name of Paul David Wilson, who is my son's godfather, but he's also a, a, a dear, dear friend. Yeah. I met him when I was doing um, the Miss Black Chicago pageant. Right. Now, there, uh, there was this beautiful girl, and then there was me. She didn't have no talent, but I did. She won. <laughs> I love the honesty. <laughs> she, love she won. She won. But she went on to win Miss Black America, so she couldn't hold two titles. I was the first runner-up, so I became Miss Black Chicago. Amazing. So in in all of that, Paul Wilson took a liking to my voice. Yes. And he um asked me if I wanted to, you know, come in and, and possibly do some jingles. I'm like, hell yeah. I didn't even yeah. know, you know, what, yeah. And um, the first jingle I did was for McDonald's. Um, Which is I did Pizza Hut. Yeah, if you yeah. go to YouTube or if your listeners go to, uh, viewers go to YouTube, you can find one that's called First Glasses. And that's uh, one of my solo national spots but the biggest spot most of my friends the biggest spot i did was for shasta soda pop right. and it was a national spot and it was called i want to pop i want a shasta hey. and then the rest <laughs> of them were like <laughs> you know i did a lot of backgrounds and uh i did that from let's see my son is 36 okay so i did that from like 82 to 87, somewhere in there. Yeah. Were you, yeah. Were you like, obviously with your education and things, were you like a performing arts kind of girl? Were you a musical theater girl? Did you do any of that stuff or was it- No, no I didn't do any of that stuff. Nope, I just kind of went with the, with the natural thing, you know what I mean? And uh, it yeah. was a blessing that, you know, people took took to me, you know, now I did, in high school, I did do, um, you know, vo uh, chorus or co the uh, vocalizing and that kind of thing with my chorus teacher and all that. But all in all, I just kind of been on a natural <laughs> role. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Was, what did you want? Was there something that you, I know some, um, I teach kids dance and it's always interesting that I say to them, I'm like, do you know what you want to do? And I knew what I wanted to do. Did you have an idea of what, did you want to be a singer or did you want to Absolutely. do something Absolutely. I, that yeah. was like my dream. I can tell you, you know, I'm the girl with the, with the hairbrush and, you know, down in the basement, you <laughs> the hairbrush is the microphone and just, you know, thinking yeah. I was all that. <laughs> stand in front of, yeah. stand in front of a mirror yeah. and, you know, make sure I made the faces and my mother and father, God rest their souls. Um, they saw, saw it in me and they, you know, they watered it cultivated it and made it happen for me. They made sure I was in yeah. all the different, like dance and that kind of thing. And um, I used to get, uh, get in, um, what do you call them, talent shows yeah. around yeah. the city. Yeah. And when I was about six or seven, my parents would always put me on like a crate or something and I'd sing at all the family gatherings, you know what I mean? And um, yeah. one of my Give songs- do the song. Go on. Do your dance. Do your, you're like, oh, oh right. right. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Um, it was Shirley Temple, uh, and it was the Little Corporal. What's what was the name of the song? Hold on. You were baby. You weren't a gleam in anybody's eye. You weren't even here. So wait. <laughs> your parents probably weren't even alive. Um. I don't know. Let me think about it, I and I'll Shirley bring it back. Well, can't think of the song though. Yeah, um, 
uh, on the good ship, on the good ship. La Lita, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> La Lita, yeah, yeah. And so I would sing that, and I would do my little dance, you know. And people would walk by and realize I, I could have put a bucket out there forty-five years ago or fifty years ago and had me a little piece of change. But um, yeah. no, it was that's how they did, and. Um, Thank God that they allowed me to travel and to be able to, you know, get into the contest and they believed in me. So my mom convinced me to do the Miss Black Chicago pageant. And I said, oh, no. And, you know, I grew up in Chicago, south side of Chicago. So I was a little light skinned girl, you know, but I always thought that I and they would pick it more black, if you will, or more ethnic. But by the grace of God, even though I didn't win, I did win because I, yeah. I you know, I'm talking to you now. I'm talking to you. Yeah. So, it, yeah, so it all worked out. Yeah. Yes. It seems, yeah. I thought, is it, look, it seems like it's a really big thing there, like in American pageants and things. It's, it's not as big over here. I, and I've no idea yeah. why. I, um, as I said, I, I wasn't a pageant girl. It, this was really a happenstance. Um, we happened to be somewhere and this lady walked up to my mom. Her name was Joe Green. She's gone now, bless her soul. But she said, you know, she's a good singer. You ought to let her be in the Miss Black Chicago pageant. I was like, they're not going to pick me, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm so glad that I, yeah, you that I got <laughs> over that. Yeah, I'm glad I got over that because it turned out, you know, yeah. in, my, in my favor. So Definitely. I, I, I think it's amazing how people start. There might be a bit of a delay, but um, yeah, there's. I, I think it's amazing how people start the career of the path that they decide to then take and how it leads you on, on different paths. Yeah. Um, yep. so you, you met Steve Hurley, wasn't it? That then did, that led you into the music with the, you know, the big hits. Yes. Did you have an idea with like Too Blind to See? Did you have an idea that this is going to be a big song and, and it's going to do well? Did you have like a good feeling about it? Nope, sure didn't. <laughs> I really didn't because, um, well, I knew, <laughs> I knew Steve and his family from the neighborhood. We all grew up together, you know, in the same area. Yeah. And I knew Steve, I knew Steve was a DJ and he knew that I sang jingles, but we never really crossed paths on that level. But and his yeah, yeah, his wife and I his wife and I became good friends. Her name's Tony. Tony and I became good friends and she was having a party for a friend of hers, a going away party. And she asked me to sing and I sang and then Steve came over. He says, You know, we've got some songs, you know, I'm I've got this record label and you know, why don't you come on in? And so I said, Sure, you know, no problem. And um I can just remember you know, house music, I didn't, I didn't go to house music. House music came to me. I really wasn't yeah. that sort of a singer, if you know what I mean, you know? So for yeah. me, it was, it was new, but in listening to Too Blind, I just, it just seemed like a, just a regular old song. I didn't, I had no idea that it would no. do do well it you know you just do it and have hopes for it you know so i demoed it and i believe if i'm not mistaken they put the demo out on id records and it bubbled under for a while and um as steve would say uh no label wanted to to sign me but then here comes atlantic east west records and they signed it and there it was so my, it's and the thing is, as well, it was, it was, it's still played now. And I, I did, a, I did an interview yesterday on, um, on BBC Radio Suffolk, which is like local to the whole of East Anglia, where I am. And the presenter said, we play that all the time on the station. People request it all the time, which must make you feel like so lovely. You know, it does make me feel lovely. It doesn't, it doesn't line my pocket. Uh, line Steve's pocket. <laughs> the record, yeah. <laughs> however, <Yes. laughs> however, however, on the positive side, it does keep keep my name on people's tongues. You know what I mean? And the song itself. So I, yeah, I'm grateful. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And the in the younger folks, younger generation, and I've seen people um, remake. You know, 
do all that stuff. But I think that some things you got to leave alone. And I think that song was uh, for its time. And I don't think anybody can come and just try to revamp it. I think it was, it just needs to be left alone. Have you, have you had many people like come to you to say, can they cover it? Or like, do they have to ask and say, look, can I actually cover this song? Like, well, has that happened? Well, a lot of people come to me, DJs or remixers come to me and ask me if they can remix yeah. it. You know, they want me, to, they want my vocals on it, but they want to remix it. And actually about six years ago, Hurley asked me to redo vocals. Um, I was, I was skeptical because that, that relationship didn't end up well. And, no. but I went on and I, I went on and did the, the vocals. Um, and it kind of just sort of went dormant for a while. And then by that time, I just, Jay, I just decided, you know what? I want to let it be. And if anybody else sings it, God bless them. But I'm, I want the, yeah. old, the old stuff to remain the same. So I never signed off on yeah. my new vocals. And, but to answer your question, I have had people come in wanting to remix it and that. And I, Steve owns all the property when it comes to Too Blind to See It. So... If, right. if anybody wanted to do that, they'd have to go to him. But as far as me, yeah. But as far as me doing it vocally for any, you know, for anybody, it's not going to happen. No. no. Yeah. But talking of, um, obviously, you obviously wrote as well, like, which I, that's, people probably ask you this loads of time. Obviously, the keep on the keep on walking for uh, Susie Penn. Do you, was, is there a little part of you that's like, Wish I'd have signed a song. Baby, up. you already know me, honey. Let me tell you. Honey, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get messy now, okay? No. That, that <laughs> song, <laughs> I actually, Jay, I actually demoed the song. It was supposed to be my song. Oh. Um, and... What happened was, yeah, yeah, Cece had finally, and I mean, it was massive, and she had a, a, a big deal yeah, with right. Arista Records, right? And so I didn't know this, but they went behind my back, the, the people I was dealing with went behind my back, at least that's how I look at it. Now, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I don't think so. Anywho, they no. went behind my back, gave the song to Cece, and she... She did her damn thing. She did a great job. And, I, you know, it, it was meant for her to have, and it was meant for her to make it a hit for me. Now, she can do all the work, and I'll just collect the residual checks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, yeah. You collect the potatoes, I'm having the chips. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay. And, I, you know, it did bother me. And, and, you know, for, through, through the years, you know, we all have sort of disbanded and gone our separate ways. I don't mean Cece, but I mean the folks, I mean the folks behind me. And I think that now at my age and, you know, where I am in my life, all of that is truly um, a blur. And I think for me yeah. now, I'm able to appreciate and see everything that, that you know, God gave me. So it yeah. was for me to be, it was for me to be where I am and doing what I'm doing um, to the to the degree that I'm doing it. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm yeah. I'm grateful. I truly am. I am. As opposed to doing these these live chats as well with various people, it's been so amazing, but also really shocking. There's been a couple of people I've spoken to that the things they've like the they've shared, which is absolutely it's so it's a, I feel honoured to be honest, because um, they could just be rude or be like yeah, it's just over now. And I've heard, you know, people that have had songs taken, uh, music videos that they weren't happy with, songs mm -hmm. that were given to them they didn't want to do, um, right. styles that they had to wear, things with um, like allegations, stuff that were, how, they were, how unhappy they were, money that just disappeared in the record company that they didn't realise what they were getting into. And it's, it's, <sighs> It's like it's almost like there is this so other dark side. I mean, obviously I've, I'm in entertainment as well, so I've seen bits of it. But I think people that watch this and people that don't know, it's good for them to hear that actually it's not all, you know, glam and you know, decent people. It's money. Right. It's a machine, and it's smoke and yes. mirrors. It's
you know. Yes, and you're absolutely. Sometimes the puppet, the 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 one that has to, the, excuse my French, but take the shit when it goes down. <laughs> you That's know, right. Out your hands half the Pay time. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And it's so common for artists that, you know, it doesn't shock me anymore. You know what I mean? And, you know, I've grown well, and, you know, emotionally, you know, uh, my heart is in it and it always has been in it for the right reasons. The business side of it was yeah. never something I paid attention to, which I should have because I probably would be living, yeah. you know, pretty, pretty good. But I mean, I'm living fine, but you know what I mean? I probably would have, um, things may have been a little different. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it is, if I could say anything to someone that's coming up now, you know, um, just, well, it's so different now. You can put out a song on YouTube. I mean, the labels are becoming passe if you, you know, maybe they'll come back, I don't know. But um, yeah. I would just say to read, read everything, you know, own your masters, you know, just own own yeah. everything. Because here's the thing, Jay, if, if you think about it, if somebody's knocking on your door, you're not knocking on theirs, they're knocking on your door because they want to, they want you to perform for them, then you've got the upper hand. You know, you can yeah. sit down and decide this is how it's going to go. Because yeah. if I had done that, it, it was like my first journey out. If I had done that, yeah. you know, it, it, it might have been different. But I was in a bad marriage. I was trying to, to get, you know, get away from that. So it was like, yeah. shoot, where do I sign? You know what I mean? So it is what it yeah, is. And, you, you know, I can't, I can't be mad at those, I think, that did me wrong. I can be more mad at myself for not paying attention. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I suppose you can pass it. Uh, you can pass it down. And I suppose what's really lovely is I also not I did not have the I've not had the success that you had. But with with the <laughs> contracts that I took when I was oh, 17, 18, and I I found some of the contracts not long ago when I was moving mm -hmm. and. I was shocked that I some know. of the things <sighs> agreed to. That I was like, "Yes, a minute." I had to. So, right. I, we had to do. We had to do this really stupid thing, which was when we used to get to the theatre. We were part of this little tribute group, so we used to take off other pop stars. And I was in like uh, I was like a Justin Timberlakey kind of tribute thing. And we used to at the end of the show, you'd go out and you had to sit and sign. Um, like little autographs for the kids and sell the company's merchandise. And then I remember that when and they say it was only 45 minutes you had to do or 40 minutes, but over 67 odd dates through the year, adding that all up, plus all the merchandise you sold, it was thousands of pounds. Yeah, yes. We were making. And it was our pictures, our lyrics, on our, our voices on the CDs, um, mm. it was our time. And now I'm like, what the hell was I doing? But, <laughs> you, know, you, I'm, you know, I was a teen, I was, you know, 19, 20, and thinking, I'm going to travel the whole of the UK, then going to go abroad, yes. and yeah, I'll do it. Yes. You know, yeah. Yes. And now, I'm like, no, I need to see the contract. I want to read it, you know. That's right. And, yeah. It, it, you know, it's you, 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 you go into it green, if you will. You go into it green. Yeah. You go into it thinking, like you said, I'm going to tour the world and things are going to be this way. But yeah. in essence, um, there's legalities, you know what I mean? And what, what got me, Jay, is this is the real, this is the kicker. When I signed uh, the ID Records contract, when they're defunct now, but I believe Steve Hurley bought all of the... Um, you know, uh, what do you call it, all the songs and all that stuff. So anyway, when I signed, I, I signed a line that said perpetuity. Now, you know what perpetuity is, right? Yes. <laughs> so until the end of time, yeah. until, and, until my grandchildren become grandchildren, uh, grandparents, yeah. and, and you know, I knew what the word meant, but the paper, to me, the paper wasn't, it wasn't even as good as it was written on, if that makes any sense. I didn't look at it that way. Do you know what I mean? So here, years later, you know, I sit down and I think about stuff like that. And, but I, I 
where I was where I was empty and upset for the last 20 years. I was like 20 years of wasted time that I, yeah. you know, graveled in it, if groveled in it, if you will. But now, as I said, I look at it and I think it's it was a lesson learned. And I, you know, yeah. I still I still got to see the world. And even now, yeah. They're, they're calling, the phone is ringing again, and I'm able to understand it now. And I, yeah. I've i never been a diva. I think of a diva as somebody that just, you know, is cute and wants to just, you know. So I call myself, yeah. but I've never been someone that um, was bitchy or, you know, um, late yeah. for dates yeah. or anything like yeah. that. And I always, I try to be careful not to do anything to, to rub people the wrong way. Now, yeah. Here I am, a more mature woman. I, <laughs> I'm not bitchy. I'm not bitchy, but it's it's either this or this. Period. Or this. Yeah, yeah. Feels good. I, yeah, I think as well because all that you'll end up doing is resenting yourself for doing it again. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's right. That's that's right. I think as well, what I think, and this is just my personal opinion, but, well, with doing these, these these chats and things, I think what you've got to remember as well, this is from me telling this to you, is that I think okay. a lot of artists from the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, I think it's only really now and locked down the last probably five years, there's more of an appreciation for it because music at the moment there is so much shite. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it's yeah like. you're right. Yep. There, mm -hmm. there is so much rubbish. And I think with the songs like not just like Two Bind to See It, you know, and, and your songs, but um I in the day that I was chatting to and Angie Brown and, yes. songs, and Doris I've chatted to Five Star and Systematic and certain songs, Rain or Shine, that yes. are still they've got that fire. There's that passion behind the song there's the work behind the song there's the love that you can hear through the artist of that right. that's their their baby and yeah you they are the songs that are still played today and i guarantee mm -hmm. they won't be playing half the crap that's out now in 20 30 20 years, years. it'll be forgotten yeah yeah still two blind it will still be on magic moments on magic and rosala everybody sprees everywhere at the moment because yeah they've locked down they're songs that have meaning. And I think that's, right. that's the company you take. You know, you're right. You're right. And it does, it, during that time, I was going through a, a bad patch, a bad marriage and all that. So it was yeah. really, really, it was written Relevant. for me in that moment. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I appreciate it because, you know, as I said, house music found me. But that song transitioned. It, tur it went over to pop. You know, it went to mainstream because it was a song. Do you know what I mean? It was a song. Yeah. And the lyrics, men and women, you know, honey, let me tell you something. No man in the world. You know, it was like. <laughs> Oh, you know, and okay, yes. I got I got sued for that because that was on I think it's Lindy Clifford or somebody let no man put us under. That came that um, little uh, what do you call it sample yeah. came from her. So they sued me. I had no idea. You know, I was just singing the damn song. You know, but um, <laughs> so you know, it, it it was a lesson learned. It was yeah. When I think about it now, it, it, to, to have it play like it's playing over and over again, everybody, I, I have so many people that text me and call me and say, girl, they're playing the song. It's such an yeah. awesome feeling because I never, ever would have ever guessed that 30 right. years this year, it's 30 years. You're not even 30, are you? Me, I'm actually the same. Do you, how old did you say your son is? 36. 36. Same age as yeah. me. Oh, great. Well, you look like you're about 22. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you baby. You can, you can <laughs> stay here. <laughs> my son, Ryan. My son, Ryan. Yeah, he's 36. My daughter, Taylor, is 33. I have seven grandchildren and one on the way. And um, yeah. I'm the but best. Let's be honest. The... You do not look like you've got grandchildren. Like, <laughs> yeah. Life's been good, hon. Life has been <laughs> It's been good. You know, I will see. Here's the secret. Here's a secret, Jay. Come closer. Come closer, my darling. Yeah. 
I was I was 12 years old when I did Too Blind to See It. I was 12. <laughs> I had my first child at 13. No, I mean, that's actually possible. But yeah. So I'm really not as old as, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I embrace my age because it beats, yes. yeah. it beats the alternative. I could be six feet under. Or in or in somebody's urn. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on a fireplace, getting hot. <laughs> you know, and so I I'm grateful. I'll be 63 in December, and I feel great. Wow. And I'm going to continue. Thank you. I'm going to continue to do what it is I do until I don't do it anymore. You know. Yeah, it's. I think a lot of people within in the music industry and artists. I think there's this natural connection this like the this like a positivity thing it's like it's the thing that keep, people say i mean i do get it all the time i mean i got asked id for um sparklers years ago <laughs> and i think you've got to be four <laughs> years by them but oh, people wow. will say oh you know what oh you've got such a baby face and da, da, da. and there's so much and i i honestly think being happy i think stress is the biggest not just the biggest killer but i think it just mm -hmm. spit out of you it just mm -hmm. It, you know, a little bit of stress is good, but I think, right. you know, I try and teach the kids that, you know, that I teach, I'm always saying to them, you know, just, just enjoy today. And, yeah. um, someone, I, I the, uh, Melissa, uh, Shimon, I spoke to two weeks ago, she, she, her little bit of advice she said is everything's temporary. So if you're right. really unhappy and going through a really bad time, it's not going to last forever. Right. But if you're having a good time, remember that that could change at any moment. So just enjoy it. And, you know, I think that's... That's that, right. Um, you know what? You're right. Um, you have to... Listen, I spent 20 years that I can't get back crying over spilt milk. You know what I mean? And so why take, yeah. the, why take yeah. my life now? You know what I mean? Why, why live in it now? Yeah. Because... Those are time, you know, I have more years behind me than I do in front of me. You know what I'm saying? So for me, being more mature, bring, being more mature in this, it helps me to realize and recognize how wonderful it was. Because you could probably attest to this. When I was traveling and touring and doing all that stuff, I never got a moment to step back and enjoy it. Do you get where I'm coming from? It was like, it was like doing, doing, doing. So I never got a chance to really and you know, people, even to this day, and this is no lie, when people talk about how massive Too Blind to See It was, or, you know, I still, I, I'm like, really? Because it didn't do the same thing over here as it did overseas. And so for me, yeah. I, nev I never really grasped the whole idea of it being so major. But now when I come over and I see how people react to it and, and how people treat me, it's just, well, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, I mean, they go yeah. mad. I mean, yes, yes. The, the LGBTQ, they are my biggest supporters. Um, oh. I, the, the LGBTQIA, yeah. we could be here all day, honey, because I love my, I love the children. I love the children. I love my queens. I love every, you know, and they have been so good to me, <laughs> you know, and I will yeah. never, ever, 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 you know, you need, to get, yeah, you, never. you need to get on, you need to get on RuPaul's Drag Race as a judge, and or two blind to see yes, either yes. of lip sync to, because honestly, what I say. it's equality. <laughs> my, my, my friend Thomas, my friend Thomas Arambula, he's my best friend, he actually writes all my music now, he wrote Turn It Up and Deep in the City, um, some of the yeah. stuff I just released a few years ago, he's always telling me, Kim, they need to get you on RuPaul's Drag Race. I said, they sure do. Somebody needs to write in. Somebody needs to tell them, you know. Um, I love well, that show. Gonna, That's my I favorite show. It. It's my favorite oh, show. It's brilliant. One, one of my um, good friends is actually in this chat at the moment. I don't know if you can see. Vicky Lee. She's a huge fan hey, of you. Vicky. <laughs> she was like, you're talking about oh, hey, Kim. Oh, Vicky. Kim. <laughs> thank you. Vicky, thank you so much. Thank you. I love you back. Good. So I've got to ask a couple of questions that some people have given you. So um, who do you listen to on your iPod phone um, and what do you okay. think of today's music? Well, I listen to her and I like Andre Day. Um, 
Let's see. Um, well, you know, Beyonce is, is such a performer, and I love just, you know, the whole performing thing when it comes to her. Yeah. Um, so good. I like, I like, yeah, I like traditional singers. I love Mary J. Blige. I, you know, R&B, we need R&B back, you know what I mean? Um, I love gospel yeah. music, so I listen to a lot of gospel music. Um, but, you know, my favorite artist is Kim Sam's, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's oh, my did. favorite on. Okay, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I listen to everybody. I do. I listen to everybody, yeah. and if something catches me, then I'm, you know, like Lizzo. I love feeling. What is yeah. it? Good as hell. I love that song. So yeah, I like to. I just kind of pick yeah. and choose. Yep. Pick and choose different songs. <laughs> um, who influenced you? Under, under, I can't read the thing. It was like Z, okay. ZZX four three seven. Who influenced you growing up in the music industry? Well, um, all of the old Motown folks. You know what I mean. It was about Motown and uh, the, the Supremes. I love them. People liking my voice to Diana Ross's voice back in you know similar yeah. tone and that. So I I found I myself that. yeah emulating. Yep. So it was definitely Motown. Definitely. Yeah. I loved, um, I don't know if it was 90s or early, uh, late 80s, but the When You Tell Me That You Love Me is one of my mm -hmm. favourite songs. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like. That's beautiful. Yes. Yes. Such a great song. Um, such oh, a yeah. great song. Um, yeah. And there was certain, I was listening to the other day, actually. Um, the, do you remember, I don't know if you, do you remember, there was, um, not the Supremes, I love the Supremes, but there was a group called the Shangri-Las. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They did leader of the pack. And, um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't do that anymore. This just that music isn't 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 it's today, not. which is and 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 to answer that um, the other part of that question, music isn't the same as it was, and I don't I don't hear it the same way. Um, I think it's been watered down. I think we need to get back to the traditional way of doing things you know um when it comes to me, real live music and you know that kind of thing not everything being yeah. digital and you know what i mean so it, yeah. it's so quick. quick i think yep some songs are just it's churned out so quick it doesn't give right. you time to appreciate it and there are some songs i mean there's some songs that i remember when they first come out i was like oh i do not like this song it's not for me but then actually after a few weeks of listening to it you warm to it. And I'm like, do you know what? This song is actually really good. I can hear the undertones. Yeah. I can hear the harmonies. Yeah. I can hear. Yeah. But people now, they're just, they don't even buy an album. They just mm -mm. click the song that they want. They don't listen to the whole album or the whole story that some right. artists put together. And yeah. It's a shame. It, it, it is. So fully agree. It is. Um, it, you know what, yep. This is a really, really, really difficult one. But okay. what would you say is one of the greatest songs of all time. Well, I mean, really, don't I mean, do I really have to? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna do that because I am not that girl. But the greatest, greatest song of all time, um, my favorite song is, is Bette Midler, Wind Beneath My Wings. It's just a beautiful, Beach. beautiful song. Beach. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. But when I think of the greatest, greatest song, mm, boy, that's a, that's really, that is a hard one. I, I could go on, I could go with Natalie Cole's Inseparable, Aretha Franklin's um, um, Natural Woman. Oh my God, that was a, an awesome song. Um, Celine Dion. So, I mean, there's so many, but I will pick Wind Beneath My Wings because that's like my favorite. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, basically, at the end of, the, of every chat I do, I do a this or that. So literally, you just choose one or the other, and then okay. a couple of questions at the end. So, okay. 80s okay. or the 90s? 90s. CD, tape, or vinyl? Vinyl. <laughs> sunrise. Oz, sunrise. I've got a vinyl player in, the, in, in my room. Um, yeah. And... It's, I love it. And when uh, I lost my dad a few years ago, and I, I oh, he I'm sorry. Um, gave me a, do you remember um, Kim Appleby? Yes. Mel and, uh, yes. Mel and Kim. And um, 
yeah, the in no time, don't worry. I've got it on. Yes. On my, and, I, and he wrote on it. It's like to, because I always used to sing as a kid. Aww. And uh, yeah. I just don't think it's the same as a CD. It just, there's something about it. It just does not sound the same. It doesn't it sound does the same. Fast. Yeah. It's, That's true. Um, yeah. Final. The, Definitely. Um, writing or singing? Well, this can this this is a two part. You know, I consider I am a singer. I don't feel I don't feel as strong about my writing ability as I do about my singing ability. So now that my friend Thomas Arambula, who you know, he is a phenomenal writer, now that he's sort of like writing for me, I would I'll choose singing as opposed to writing because he's just phenomenal. So yeah, singing. <laughs> um Sunrise or sunset? So sunset to me reminds me of when someone passes on. So I would like to always look at it as being a, a sunrise. I, I'd love to see the sunrise because I that lets me know that I'm still that. in that number. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, lipstick or lip gloss? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? For, for for these old lips, I need a little chapstick. Chapstick and lipstick. Yes, honey. Yeah, these things are getting a little dry. Yeah. Chapstick. <laughs> All right. Oh, brilliant. Um, New York City or London? Oh, my God. London. London. I would have never uh, known that had I not gone, you know, come over. I love London, I love the UK, I love all my fans. Yes, London. Yes. Hands down. Um, too, blind, too blind to see it, take my advice. Oh, take my advice. Take my advice okay, because, cool. um, yeah, I was out of that on. marriage and then when I got into a new relationship, I realized that good men don't come a dime a dozen. So take my advice and, and you know, do the right thing by your partner. So yeah, take my advice. And I have writing credits on take my advice. So I get a little piece of change. So that has a lot to do with it too. <laughs> Getting those chips. <laughs> um, well, what is it, if I was, if I was going to come for dinner, what is your go-to meal to cook that you're like, this is tacos. my piece of tacos. Tacos. <laughs> tacos. Tacos. Okay. Now really, uh, to be honest, they say I make a good pot of spaghetti, you know, with the bolognese and all that stuff. But um, I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm a simple kind of girl. Just give me a taco. I love taco, anything spicy. So if you came, I'd have whatever you drink, whatever you drink, I'd have that for you. But we would probably be eating off of paper plates and tacos and nachos. Yes. Chinese, you know, that, that sounds yeah. perfect. Yeah. Last two, <laughs> what is your biggest phobia have you got a phobia of anything something that, like do not like them or that yeah um and this is a two-parter too but i don't like be, i don't like the underground i don't like to go underground um yeah i, I feel like i'm i feel like i can't breathe do you know what i mean yeah. i literally I, and when we were when we were my husband and i were in london a few years back and he um he wanted he wanted to go to the underground and i kept telling him i don't like it i don't want to go up under there i don't and but he took me up <laughs> under there anyway and i was like this the whole time <laughs> <laughs> and then once we came out i cussed his ass out i did okay so that's my phobia i don't like flying but i say the underground thing i can't do it mm -mm. Okay, and the last question I ask every single person I chat to, and it's always my favourite one that I like to ask, and it can be anything at all, but what would you say is your greatest bit of advice or your motto or something you live by or a quote that you say, okay. this is my, and don't say, take my, you better think twice. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to do it, not going to do it. You know... <laughs> Um, I think my 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 go to saying is, um, be a you know live it, be about it, stay stay focused, stay on your stay on your grind. I I suffer from depression, and I let a lot of years just pass me by. And if, you know, so I always say that I have more time in front of me than I do in back of me. But you don't 
the biggest thing is you don't want any regrets. So I would say no, no regrets. That would be my that would be my um to go go to uh, phrase. No regrets. Honestly, Kim, that's beautiful. Thank you so 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 much for doing this. Thank and you. like you might just think, oh, well, it's, it's just it's nothing, but it means something to me, and it is your time. Oh, um, it is oh. your noon. Um, it means a lot because I mean, believe it or not, there's been. Not nine times out of ten, the people that I've contacted and spoke to have been lovely, but there's been people that are like, no, not interested, unless I'm yeah. an international best selling newspaper, they don't want to talk to me. So, honestly, yes. at the bottom of my little British heart, thank Aww. you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you are so, you know, and I have to, I, I honor you, and I truly mean this. I, you know, Amy, Amy, um, she interviewed me a, a couple of weeks ago, but. Yeah. I really, I really thank you both. And I thank everyone that watches and sees where I'm going. Um, you know, it's been a journey. And for you, someone that is young enough to be my son, to be even interested in, in talking with me, it means the world. It means the world. So, so I give it back to you. Ditto 100%. Thank you. You're Bless cute you. as a button. We'll talk anytime you want, my darling. Yes, we will. And good luck. Good luck with the club and everything. Yeah. Good luck. I know. I'll let you, you know got how this. it goes. Yes. Will, I'm, a, I'm going if I'm gonna be crazy, but I'm gonna stick um one of your songs on during the night as well. And I'm gonna try there and get a video. There you go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Honestly, Thank you. Thank no worries. You. Have an amazing rest of your day, lovely, and keep in touch. Mwah. Okay. Mwah. You too now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.